We investigated magnesium zinc alloys using a combination of electron microscopy and small angle scattering. The interesting thing about these alloys is that inside their magnesium matrix they contain these very elongated uh, magnesium zinc precipitates. And since these precipitates have such a high aspect ratio, they very much affect the mechanical properties of the material. So we'd like to know, with small angle scattering, what the volume fraction and size distribution of these precipitates is, so that we can relate them to the mechanical properties of the material. So we collected a lot of small angle scattering patterns for, uh, for this alloy for a variety of aging times. So the higher the aging time, uh, the more of these rod-like precipitates we have inside the alloy. Now, without further information, we cannot actually fit the, this scattering pattern. Fortunately, the information that we need is available in the electron micrograph. In particular, what we need to know is the general morphology of the scatter, which in this case is, an high aspect is a high aspect ratio rod, and we need to know their orientational relationship within the sample. Armed with this information, we can now fit the small angle scattering patterns all to within uh, the uncertainty of the data. Um, and what we get out of this is a lot of size distributions. The X-ray scattering size distributions are here shown in red, and the size distributions determined by electron microscopy are here shown in uh, green and blue for the radius and length distribution, respectively. There are two things that we can see from these distributions. The first one is that for samples where we compared the results from uh, X-ray scattering and electron microscopy, the agreement is very, very good. The second thing to note is that uh, the electron microscopy distributions have been obtained by painstakingly hand measuring 500 precipitates for each of these comparisons. Whereas the results from uh, X-ray scattering have been obtained over trillions and trillions of these precipitates. Simultaneously, we get information on the volume fraction of these precipitates. This is very useful information if you want to find out more about the precipitation kinetics that are going on in this system. We can also, however, introduce an oven inside our small angle scattering instrument, so we can repeat this experiment in situ. Then, with a one hour time resolution, we can follow this precipitation process over the course of several days. We can then easily increase the temperature and uh, see how this affects the precipitation kinetics. You will note here that there is a difference uh, between the in-situ experiment and the ex-situ experiment. And that is because in the in-situ experiment the, the heating rate of the oven is different than in the ex-situ experiment. And this causes also a difference in precipitation kinetics.